Hello? Philip, where are you? I'm at the airport. Uh, Margaret, my plans have changed. And I'll be going to Dallas for a few days. Uh, Philip, uh, are you sure you're all right? Of course I'm all right. Well, Margaret, they're announcing my plane now. Look, I'll call you tomorrow from Dallas. How you can spot trouble. I hadn't seen Margaret Ballinger for about six months. And maybe it was the way she stood there, not moving, just waiting for me, that warned me something was wrong. Philip's falling apart. It all started with the phone calls. When I answer the phone, they always hang up. And when Philip's home, he takes some calls in another room. It's all very secretive. Well. Oh, it's not that, Harry. It's not that. We've been married 12 years. Philip, well, Philip had a couple of casual affairs, but that was a long time ago. We survived all that. So this is different. I want you to help me, Harry. You said he went away on a business trip. When's he due back? Margaret, when's he due back? He's not on any business trip, Harry. That's just what I let people think. Philip disappeared a week ago. I went to the Ballinger Publishing Company. Margaret had given me the name of Philip's assistant. Excuse me. May I help you? My name's Harry Orwell. I'd like to see Mr. Rotten. Just a moment, please. Mr. Rotten. Uh, there's a Mr. Orwell here to see you. Now, tell him I'm a friend of Mr. Ballinger's. He's a friend of Mr. Ballinger's. Fine. He'll be right with you. Thank you. Hi, Bert Rossum. Uh, Harry Orwell. Uh, was it about a manuscript or...? It's um, personal. Oh, well, come on, my office then. I'm a private detective, and I'm also a friend of Phillips and Margaret's. She's worried about him. Well, uh, I'm his assistant, and I'm worried about him, too. I mean, he goes away on a business trip, and I don't know anything about it, and I don't know where he is. Has he ever done it before? No. You have no idea where he is? Well, I got this from him. It's his handwriting. We're on business back soon, Philip. When'd you get it? Mm, it must be more than a week. You have the envelope? Well, it was mailed right here in San Diego. I look around his office. Well, I, I already looked. Help yourself, if you like. I had no idea what I expected to find. I didn't even know what I was looking for. anything? If he gets in touch with you, let me know. Harry Orwell, I'm in the book.
that part up right there. CFO 207EE. CFO 207EE. Thank you. CFO 207EE. Yeah, right here. Uh, Marina West. Dot B. Slip 24. Who's it registered to? Uh, Carolyn March. Alpine. Address? General delivery. Thanks. Roy! Hey, Roy! How's my car? Visiting hours aren't till six, Harry. You said you'd have it ready, Roy. Would I lie to you, Harry? Just give me the keys, Roy. That car's got a will to live, Harry. You be gentle with it. I'll treat it as though it belonged to me. Hey, you know a Carolyn March? She lives around here. Used to live around here. Used to? Last week's paper was quite a wreck. They've got the car over at Lutz's garage. You from the insurance company? They told me they got a guy coming by. Is this the car Carolyn March was killed in? The sheriff's here? No, oh, he looked at it. Say anything? Nope. Well, that's something. Hey, did she live around here? private detective. I'm Michelle March. Philip's wife sent you, didn't she? May I ask you a couple of questions? What a drag. Yeah. Where's Philip? Should be home with his wife by now. When's the last time you saw him? After the accident. He came back here to me and stayed all week. Well, Philip was in the car when your mother had the accident. Do you think this will hit the papers? Probably will. Well, then he's just going to have to tell his wife everything. What do you mean, everything? You don't have any idea what I'm talking about, do you? 
I guess I don't. Philip wasn't leaving his life for Carolyn. He's leaving her for me. So here was the reason for Philip Ballinger's strange behavior. And I had to explain it to Margaret. And I didn't want to explain it to Margaret. So you see, the reason this has all dragged on so long is... Well, Philip just hasn't been able to work up the courage to tell his wife. Do you think he's embarrassed? Now, how old are you? I'm 16. Did it ever occur to you that Philip might be lying to you? It's happened. Married men telling lies to little girls. A private eye. Funny, I never met one before. I bet most people haven't. What are you going to tell Margaret? Yeah, I'm going to leave the telling to Philip. I've been doing that for six months. Were well, your mother and Philip friends? They got along. But why was she driving the night of the accident? Does that matter? Why? Philip and I had a fight. I took the keys and told him I wouldn't give him back until he called his wife and told her the truth. He'd been drinking. So? So, Philip got mad and said he had to get out. Carolyn saw by that time he was in no shape to drive, so she said she'd take him home. She's dead, isn't she? I mean, she's... She's really dead. Sugar and spice and everything nice. Well, it wasn't up to me to figure out how or why Philip Ballinger had gotten involved with a 16-year-old girl. It had happened before to other men. Gentle, it just died on me in the middle of nowhere. The car didn't die, Harry. You killed it. I'm in town to see about selling our boat. I have a boat. It's down in the marina. It's a very expensive boat. Philip bought it for us. I... I guess his wife knows now. She does know, doesn't she? What do you want from me? Well, I need the money for funeral expenses and everything, and... I don't like to keep taking money all the time from Philip without his wife knowing about it. That seems wrong. Doesn't it seem wrong to you? Yep. Excuse me. That's how it seemed to me. So I'm going to tell her. I don't think Philip has the guts to tell her himself. And neither did Michelle. She was trying to get me to tell Margaret for her. Why didn't you tell me before? Well, I was hoping it might blow over. What happened to change your mind? Well, she said she was going to come by here and tell you herself. What's she like, Harry? She's 16. <laughs> oh, poor Philip. No wonder he's been acting the way he has. He must be so embarrassed. <laughs> I'd heard that kind of laugh before. There was no humor in it. And as things turned out, there was nothing to laugh about at all. During the night, someone had found a permanent solution to the problem of Michelle March. 
Happened about 11.30 last night. We know that because another boat sailed in full of happy locals, and they, they found her just after it happened. Wouldn't believe the number of drunks on boats, Harry. It's getting so the channel's as bad as a freeway. Yeah. Now, it was death by gunshot, rifle. Ballistics uh, calculated the angle of the trajectory they figured came from over there in the parking lot. Maybe a telescopic sight. Death was instantaneous. Huh. Why am I telling you all this? Frank, the lab guards, are they finished? Almost, Manny. Right. Hi, Harry. Hi, Manny. I was Alpine. Have a nice visit. Michelle March was killed here, but she lives there. I go to check it out, and what do I find? That you have been there before me. I have to make a living, too. I respect that, believe me. I know how hard you work, Harry. But to drive all that way to Alpine to investigate a murder a day before it occurs, it's sort of like fortune telling. Now, suppose you tell me what you were doing in Alpine a day before yesterday. Want to hear about a fishing trip I went on in Baja a month ago? No, I want to hear about Alpine. I want to hear about that nice, long talk you had with the deceased. Harry, you wouldn't be holding out. No, I wouldn't do that. I'm a friend of yours. Oh, good. That's what I thought, because it's your license. If you do, you know that, don't you? I'll get back to you. Yeah, you bet you will. You bet your sweet license you will. Excuse me. You're excused. Can I talk to you a minute? Go ahead and talk. Don't bother me none. You worked around here for a long time? Hey, I said, have you worked around here for a long time? Where is it? You don't want to talk. You want to have a conversation. OK, I'll have a conversation. Any particular subject? Yeah. Yeah. I'm not much interested in photography. Yeah, just take a little longer look there. Recognize that fella? Who wants to know? Yeah, five bucks wants to know. I've seen him around. When? Nice fella. Never bothered me none. You didn't happen to see him last night, did you? It's hard to say. It's pretty dark around here at night. Haven't you noticed? Yeah. 277-1277. What's that? Mm, it's my phone number. If your memory comes back, there's another five bucks in it for you. Two seven seven one two seven seven. seven. Uh, if I'm not there, call the San Diego Police Department. Ask to speak to Lieutenant Manny Quinlan. He'll know where to find me. My name's Harry Orwell. Okay, Harry. going to tell you. No. That's a lie. But I was breaking up with her. What did you have in mind for an uncle? A younger sister? Philip, Philip, I'm sorry. I, I say stupid things because I'm frightened and upset. Can't you see that? Do you think I plan in advance everything I'm going to say? Perhaps I could be more civilized if it didn't matter so much. Margaret, I really, really was trying to get away from her. You're all I have. I love you. I'm desperately afraid. Philip, tell me what to do. I don't know. I don't know. We were both here last night. Whatever happened, 
We were both here last night. Would you like a cup of tea, Harry? Tea? No. Did you see the paper? No, why? That's it. I didn't Philip tell you? No, we haven't talked about it. Why don't you think you should? Well, why? It's over now, isn't it? What is there to talk about? As a matter of fact, I thought he was going to talk about it last night. I mean, about what's been going on all this time. I kept waiting because he, he seemed as if he wanted to talk. So? Well, we had some drinks by the fire. I made dinner. He had some galleys to go over, so I ended up reading them with him. The two of you sat here, having dinner, reading galleys of a book, right? Well, I often help him. What's so strange about that? Well, he's been missing for a week. I mean, don't you think you ought to... Harry, I told you I don't question him. He didn't say anything, so I didn't either. He didn't mention the girl you didn't ask about. That's right. That's right. Anybody come by? No. Anybody telephone? Um, I only hesitate because I'm one of those odd people who doesn't always answer the telephone. But... No. Nobody phoned. Just the two of you sitting here in front of the fire having dinner. Yes, that's right. Michelle March is dead, Margaret. I didn't know her. And I don't want to think about her. Well, I think you ought to start thinking about it. The police are going to ask you questions. Well, I'm not curious. Oh, boy, I am. No, absolutely not. It's a man's first book, and I'm gambling on it. Well, then you must disabuse him of the idea that I'm going to let a 23-year-old lad dictate to me what our paperback agreement is going to be. I'm sorry, Harry. Long distance, I'll be as quick as I can. A movie sale. Now, Simon, your client is a genius, but he's a deranged one. Who do you think is going to be interested in making a motion picture about the tribulations of a giraffe? Philip, can you... Oh, I'm sorry. Agents. I'm waiting for Good idea. Simon, you're going to be... There's a big difference between seagulls and fish. And a neurotic giraffe. Sit down. He's back. Yeah. Did he say anything? You'll have to figure that one out. Yeah. You read all this? Why, sure. All of it? Well, there's an old story about a guy that sent a manuscript to a publisher and he got a little printed rejection notice back, and he got really mad because he knew they couldn't have read it all because he glued the last 50 pages together. So he sent him a letter, and he got a little letter back, said he didn't have to eat a whole apple to know it was bad. What are you reading now? Oh, this is a little murder mystery. George did it? George did it. He's guilty as hell. I figured it out on page six. It turns out that he did do it, you reject it? No, no. That's just a little game I play. You must have solved a lot of these, I suppose. Did you ever read any of them? No, no, I, I don't like them. Well, they're kind of fun. And that murder last night, who done it? Now, there's one every night. Coroner says that murder's getting to be like a sport. But that was not really like a murder and more like a killing. You know she was a friend of Phillips? You're kidding. Nope. Are you, uh, involved in this somehow? Well, I told you that the last time I was here. You're not saying Philip knew anything about this? 
thought you were friends. Well, murder is murder. Well, now, that occurred, uh, what, about 11.30 last night? Isn't that what the paper said? Hmm. Well, let me tell you something. Philip was working late in this office right here, and I was right here with him. You sure? Absolutely. You know, the only thing worse than having no alibi is having two alibis. Harry, sorry to keep you waiting. Ready for some lunch? Yeah. When's your birthday? April, why? You're gonna get somebody to buy you a new tobacco pouch. How long you had that thing? <laughs> a long time. My peace and security blanket. We have an emotional attachment to each other. I met your girlfriend, Michelle. How did you find out? Well, Margaret was worried about you, so I did a little investigating. Margaret? Mm-hmm. I only told her about it this morning. You told her about it this morning? Somehow she found out. She showed me the picture in the paper. So we discussed it before I left the house. One of them was lying to me. Whether it was Margaret or whether it was Philip didn't really matter. What bothered me was why. on me, Harry. I am. Yeah. Want me to tell you what I think? Take a look. Woman's high heel. Huh. Found at the scene of the crime. It was caught in between the deck boards of the boat, right <laughs> next to the body. I'm going to take a guess, Harry, and say this belongs to a woman, and that woman happens to be your client. All I want to know is your client's name. All I owe you is hard evidence, man. Well, that's all. I'm going to give you one more chance. What is your client's name, Harry? It's not evidence. I'm going to find her. When I do, if she's involved in this, then you'll try to conceal something from all me. All right, I got some evidence for you. I'm sure you'd see the light. Tell the March may have been murdered. What? Yeah, I checked the automobile. The, the, the brake lines might have been cut. Why didn't you tell me that before? But it's not your jurisdiction. It's Alpine. That accident was checked out by some kid sheriff who's never been involved in a murder in his whole life. He had no reason to suspect foul play. You knew that, Harry. That's why I didn't give him the evidence. I saved it for you. I want to help. Who is your client? Give me a little time, Manny. Not just a, a day, an hour. Why should I? Well, I don't get paid by the department. I got to put this together by myself. Otherwise, I don't get paid. Manny didn't know much about painting, but he knew what he liked. On the other hand, I didn't like what I knew. I called the Ballinger house first to make sure Margaret wasn't home. Well, like most people who don't steal for a living, she wasn't too careful about locking the door.
Why don't we take that pair of shoes and put them in the fireplace, Harry? Well, why didn't you do that last night? I know it's ridiculous, but I've always found it rather difficult to throw away something really good. It seems wasteful somehow. Manny? Where is he? No, I'll... I'll get back to him. Why were you at the marina last night? That... That child called. Michelle March? Yes. It was just one of those strange coincidences that sometimes do happen. I picked up the phone at exactly the same time as Philip picked up the extension in the bedroom. I realized they hadn't heard me. She said she had to see him, and, and they arranged to meet at the boat. What time is it? Oh, just after 11, I think. Oh, what happened? Then Philip put down the phone, and I did too. I couldn't take it anymore, Harry. Margaret. Don't come any closer. I just want to help you. I don't want your help. Okay, Mark. Harry. I... I followed him. I waited a few minutes because I didn't want him to see me. But when I got down to the dock, there was nobody there. All I could see was the boat at the end of the pier. I thought, I thought they were in the cabin together. I lost my head. I was going to kill her. I had a gun with me. This gun. Well, I, I ran all the way down the pier to the boat. And I found her. She was dead. And Philip wasn't anywhere. Well, then I... I thought I was going to be sick. And I thought, if I'm sick, they'll know somebody was here. So I ran away. I knew I'd lost my heel somewhere, but I couldn't go back for it because I thought I was going to be sick. Well, then... Then what did you do? And I, I came back. Philip wasn't here. He, he didn't come back for hours. When he did, he was, I don't know, he was. Did he say anything? No. He was very pale and he wouldn't come to bed. He just sat there staring at me and drinking and drinking. Funny thing was, he didn't seem to get drunk. And then he passed out. The next morning, the newspaper came. Margaret, do you think he killed him? Margaret, do you think Philip killed him? Stop it! Well, that's the question the police are going to ask. They're going to ask questions all day and all night. Well, the police don't know I was there. How do you know they don't? Well, if they did, they'd be here right now. Well, they're gonna know, because I'm gonna have to tell them. What are you talking about? We're friends. I know, I'm sorry. But you work for me. Everything I've told you from the beginning is a, is a privileged communication. No, 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 that's not so in a murder. What? No. Read the evidence code sometime. It applies to doctors, lawyers, clergymen. It doesn't apply to private detectives. If I don't tell them, I'm an accessory. Margaret. I'm going to put the gun down. Margaret. Margaret. I want you to tell me who killed Michelle. 
You were there. I know it. The police are going to know it. So tell me what happened. She called me, asking me to meet her. I went there. I heard a shot. It sounded far away, like a car backfiring. Suddenly, she crumbled and fell. But it was dark, and I, I didn't know what was happening. I, I had to use my pipe lighter. And I saw she was dead. There wasn't anything I could do. And so I ran away from her, the same way I ran away from her mother when she was killed. You think Margaret killed her? That's what the police are going to think when I show them these shoes. What do those shoes have to do with this? Leave us alone, Harry. The doctor. The bullet entered the left subacromial region, glancing off the scapula. Thanks, doctor. And Listen, statistics says you were shot by the same rifle used to kill Michelle March. Yeah, you heard right. We found it two blocks away in an alley. I want to know who did this, Harry. Yeah, me too. When you find out, let me know. Enough of games already. You want a subpoena? You get a subpoena. Right. You're going to suspend my license? Your Honor, I want to suspend this man's license because he won't cooperate in the case of attempted murder. Who was the victim, Your Honor? He was, Your Honor. That's silly, Manny. You should have been a lawyer. Manny, you think you know who shot me? Me? I don't know. You follow your leads, I'll follow mine. Thank you, Harry. I had to call you. I killed her for giving me my darling, Philip. Did you call the police? No. Where'd you find it? In the typewriter. What are you looking for? Something. Maybe that. A tobacco pouch? Have you ever seen him without this? No. Me either. What's he call it? Peace and security. Hello? Manny Quinlan. Manny, Harry, I've just been trying to get you, Doctor. Where are you? Manny, I... Guys from the marina. They just called me and said for me to tell you that the man in the picture came down to the boat. Who is the man in the picture? Philip Ballinger. Are you looking for him, Harry? I was looking for him, then I wasn't looking for him, now I'm looking for him again. Harry, it doesn't make any sense. And who is the guy with the beard? The guy that was with Ballinger. Well, he may be the guy we're looking for, Manny. I'll see you there. <laughs>
cast off that line there, will you? You know, you really should have left her alone, Philip. I mean, you just fought the girl. It wasn't like that. You'd have found out. Found out what? Well, you and I were the only ones, you know. Come on, get in here. I just fixed it. So where are the keys? In the boat, why? All right, if I use it. It doesn't belong to me. Hey, hey you got my five bucks? Yeah. When Lieutenant Quinlan gets here, tell him to call the, the harbor police. Bird. Why didn't you kill me when you killed Michelle? I was going to. I wanted to kill you both. Great sight I got on there. I could have put one in your sideburn just real easy, but, but I didn't lose my head. I thought, wait, they'll think you killed Michelle. So that's why I didn't kill you, because I didn't lose my head. I want you to remember that, Philip. Yes, I will remember that. And I understand why you did what you did. I think you loved Michelle, perhaps in a different way. Shut up. Don't try to talk me out of this. Bert, you won't get away with it. Oh, yes, I will. When we get out to sea, you're going to have an accident fall overboard. Oh, I'll report it to the authorities, and I'll even tell Margaret, try to console her. In a few days, your body will wash ashore. There'll be an inquest, and the case will be closed.
of the bridge. Looks like he's trying to force him onto the beach. idea that there are worse things in this world than infidelity. For a while there, she thought I was a murderer. How about you? Are you adjusting? Well, I don't gamble, drink, take drugs, but nobody's perfect. You know, Philip, you're in the wrong business. You should have been a marriage counselor. Harry, if you ever decide to write a book, let me know, will you? If I ever did write a book, I had the title for it. Nobody's perfect. We all have to come in out of the cold once in a while, and we all warm ourselves at different fires. Sometimes you get burned. <laughs> <laughs> 